Welcome to a series called The End of Times, where we're going through the book of Revelation, verse by verse, to see what it is we can expect to happen in the end times. And as we've gone through the book of Revelation, we've finally hit the end of chapter 17 and the beginning of chapter 18, and there's a peculiar declaration that takes place uh, from an angel with some great authority, and we're just going to pick it up right there where we left off in Revelation 18, starting verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. You know, this is an interesting verse because it gives us an insight into the spiritual side of Babylon because we've spent, I don't know, uh, 20 episodes talking about the harlot and Babylon and just this gluttonous spending, the sexual pornea that, that feeds the sexual promiscuity of the kings of the earth. And it's just, it's just a vulgar, uh, evil, evil nation. Uh, that just thrives on gluttonous spending and sinful behavior. Uh, but this is the first time we kind of see the demonic side of things. Now we've seen the demonic side of the beast itself, but not of Babylon. And it's interesting because it says this mighty angel, we'll come back to that angel, because uh, this angel of great authority, that, that there is an important piece there. But it's what he says. He says, he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become a habitation of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. Meaning, what we're dealing with is we're talking about a culture of demonically possessed people, of a demonically possessed culture in general. You know, so we're just kind of going to look at, well, what does he mean, what, is, what does this angel mean by a cage for every foul spirit? Like, what does all this mean? Well, let's start by saying that it's about demonic possessions. Uh, when, a, when a person is possessed by a demon, they don't just spin their heads and throw up. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, they don't even know. And they engage in certain behavior, and they're not even really sure why they're doing it. Um, and there's many that will come into you often. You know, it says in Matthew 12, 43, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. Luke 8, 2 tells us, And a certain woman who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. And of course, Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. And her behavior and her lifestyle was a product. They went hand in hand with each other. Her behavior invited demons. And demons were very welcome into her life because of her lifestyle. And because of the lifestyle of Babylon, you got the same situation. Um, when one leaves, seven come back. In the case with Mary, seven were in her. You know, and then if you look at uh, Luke's 8.30, there was legion. You know, this guy was so possessed by so many demons that they were named legion. So how do these demons get in you? How do they get in you? Well, it specifically tell. I mean, it's it's very obvious. First and foremost, uh, your behavior invites them first. Uh, but it says of First Corinthians ten twenty one or ten twenty. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. So we sit at the table with demons and we drink from the cup of demons. And because of that, the demons are invited into your home. They're invited into your life. They're invited into your body and they're invited into your country. 
And this country, Babylon, is a cage for demons. It's a habitation for demons. You know, it also says in 1 Timothy 4, 1, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So Jesus went around casting out demons of people who because of their lifestyle, because of their sinful nature, these demons were possessing them. They were inviting them in. Every time you watch porn, every time you lie, every time you steal, every time you do these things, you are sitting at the table and drinking from the cup of demons. Of course they're going to enter into you. And of course this country, because everybody in this country, churchgoers and otherwise, will generally say that all these things that I agree with that are sins, I don't think are sins. But if I disagree with them, then they are sins. In other words, if you don't look like me or you don't act like me, then you're a sinner. But as long as you act like me, you're not a sinner. And as a result, you're sitting, those people, they're sitting literally at the table and drinking from the cup of demons. And this country has become a habitation of demons and a cage for every foul, foul spirit. It, it, there, it, it's not that complicated how this happens. If we look at Matthew 12, 24, but when Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Because of this acceptance of the sinful lifestyle that the church has just embraced. Now they shun the sins they don't like or they disagree with, but man, they just love and embrace the sins that they love. And because of that, uh, they are sacrificing to demons, literally sacrificing to demons. You know, in Deuteronomy 32, 17, and as Moses kind of talked about the law before his death, it says in 32, 17, they sacrificed to demons, not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals that your fathers did not fear. Of the rock who begot you, you were unmindful and have forgotten the God who fathered you. The spirit of Babylon, the harlot, this nation, the harlot, it's a giant party. Uh, everybody's feeling safe. They're spending gluttonously and they're really enjoying themselves, deceived by the lie from Satan that they're just going to get sacked. They're just going to get raptured up and you don't got it. Jesus is going to put a big old crown of glory on your head and say, good job, faithful servant, because you just enjoyed your gluttonous spending and sin and kick back and you didn't help anybody, you just helped yourself. Good job. Good job. That, ladies and gentlemen, is sacrificing to demons. But it's even worse than that. Not only is this country sitting at the table with demons, drinking from the cup of demons, sacrificing to demons, and inviting them into their lives and homes, but it says this in Psalm 106, starting verse 36. Psalm 106, starting verse 36. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and daughters. Then they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled by their own works and played the harlot by their own deeds. If you don't think that's taking place here, 
you're fooling yourself. I mean, we're, we're, we're watching it play out in the Supreme Court right now. Half the country embracing the blood of our sons and daughters. Why is it a habitation of demons? Sitting at the table with demons, drinking from the cup of demons, sacrificing to the demons, and sacrificing the blood of our sons and daughters to the demons. And as a result, what you have, Babylon the Great is fallen is fallen and has become a habitation of demons, a prison of every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. You know, this is a hard conversation to have, um, and we're going to stick with it. I, you know, I just mostly want to, well, how did we become a habitation of demons? How did this happen? How did we become a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird? How? That's how. It's important that we don't just act like we're victims. We're not victims. We invited it here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and most of America is continuing to embrace this invitation of demons. Meanwhile, some are still trying to cast them out. And these demons know who's who. You know, it's interesting because God knows the heart of man. But somehow demons understand this to some degree as well. In Acts 19, 13, Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. You know, demons are conscious beings. Uh, they're very aware of what it is they're doing, and they're very aware of who you are and who you represent. They know. They know when the Spirit of God dwells within you, and if you're just talking smack. Love to hear any insight on all this. Put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel with Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. So please don't ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love God.